Okay, coming to O. Other organisms. Now, let me just flash this. Other organisms present in the habitat can affect the survival of a population. What do I mean by that, okay? Let's say we talk about an organism A. There is a huge population of organism A living at this habitat. And it happens that this organism A feeds on organism B. What would this happen? What will happen to organism B? It will cause the population size of organism B to decrease because there was a huge population of organism A right now. So, always remember, when there is an organism that may feed on other organisms, you know, this will definitely affect the population size of the other organism. Okay? For example, plants compete with other plants for water, mineral, salt, space, and sunlight from the soil. Let me give you an example. Let's say on this backdrop here, farmers are planting vegetables. Okay? Now, when they plant vegetables, of course, when the vegetables start to grow, something else starts to grow as well. What grows? Weeds. Weeds start to grow and weeds will start to uh, compete with the vegetables for water, mineral salt, space and sunlight. I told you this is how to remember it. Starting from the ground right now, okay? Starting from the ground, that is water, mineral salt, space and sunlight. So, the weeds will definitely compete with the vegetables for all this. Now, then of course the farmers, in order to prevent the vegetables from you know, getting, uh, you know, having their nutrients taken away by the weeds, then the farmers will go there and pull out all the weeds, okay? Plants cannot grow well and may die if they grow too near to one another. What do you remember? P5, overcrowding. Overcrowding will occur and this will cause some plants to die. Right now. Continuing. Plant eaters such as sheep will reduce the total populations of plants. That was the example I was talking about. If there was a huge number of sheep, definitely it will cause the total population of plants to decrease. Now, you and I, people. People can often cause great changes to a community. What do I mean by that? You see, humans have a tendency to clear land for houses, for buildings, okay? But when they clear, some of them do it in an unethical way. For example, they burn down the forest instead of cutting down the forest. So when they burn down the forest, not only do they burn down the whole habitat, they also kill the living organisms that live inside, okay? For example, cutting down trees and polluting a river will often kill the organisms living in those habitats. Let's continue. Some organisms like bacteria and fungi can cause diseases. Under suitable conditions, they multiply quickly, allowing the disease to sp spread fast from the infected organisms to the healthy ones. I'll give you an example later on. Whole populations of plants and animals can be destroyed as a result of disease-causing organism. Here comes the example. Since a disease can spread so rapidly, farmers always try to remove or destroy infected crops or animals as soon as the disease is detected. This is blight. Once this leaf is infected by blight, okay, usually farmers will quickly use their scissors or their knife, cut away this leaf because it can spread. But when they cut away the leaf, they will have to sanitize the scissors or the knife because there could be disease that is already found on the scissors when the farmers cut, okay? Pests can also affect the survival of organisms. For example, what is this? Aphids, right now. Aphids can destroy or attack the buds. When they attack the buds, actually they will um, inject or, or they, not only do they take in the plant sap, Plant set is also a food source for the plants. Huh? They will also send in some disease into the plant to weaken the plant further. Okay? So this plant may eventually even die, you know? Aphids, for example, feed on the set of young shoots and damage plants by spreading disease. Now, I'm sure you know what is weaver. Maybe you don't. Now, go to your mom's rice bucket and open up. 
Do you see any black little stuff crawling on your rice grains? If you have seen that, that is weaver. Now, how does weaver get this food? Of course, rice grain is, a, is their source of food. So what they will do is they will drill holes, they will bore holes through the rice grains. When they do that, actually they will break up or break down the rice grain. So that's why eventually your rice become powdery. That is because the weaver is doing its job, eating up your rice grain. Weavers are small beetles that destroy crops and grains. Their long snouts have jaws at the end to bore holes in buds, flowers, fruits, and seeds. One last example on other organisms. That is red tide algae. Red tide algae releases toxins that paralyze and kill fishes. In Singapore, we have some fish farms called Kelong located in the middle of the sea. Every season, there will be red tide algae that will come and attack the fishes that live in the ocean. So, in the sea, okay? So, farmers have to react very quickly to prevent their fish from, from being attacked by the red tide algae because red tide algae can be very poisonous and fishes that die because of red tide algae will not be able to be soaked to humans for eating because they are poisonous to us as well, okay? So when they, when they reproduce very fast, patches of the sea will appear reddish in color. As a result, many dead fishes will wash ashore and seafood affected by red tide algae is poisonous. Let's move on to W. Water is important for life. It forms an essential part of living cells. Many substances in your body such as digested food and waste are dissolved in water. In plants, water carrying tube can only transport mineral salts that are dissolved in water. Now, all these are straightforward. You learn this in P3, P4, and P5. So I shall not elaborate further. Water, by the way, always remember if we have a fresh or a clean source of water, of course, organisms can be found down there. 